Do you happen to have a belief you wish to discuss? Yes. I believe that many of us are incredibly lucky and we take credit for our luck instead of we, we characterize our lives as something that we've earned and that hmm. we deserve and that we worked hard for yeah. when in reality that's probably true to a degree but when I look at my own life I know how very lucky I have been from circumstance by being born in the United States by having access to public libraries because I had access to nothing else. I had the potential to grow into someone who could have been racist, narrow-minded. I never saw a person of color until I was 12 years old in person. And it was only because I had access to the public library and insatiable curiosity that I became someone who was really well educated because it was my ticket out this is interesting i like this i don't think i've discussed this belief before that the belief is that uh, as humans we take too much credit for our successes in the sense that we are we don't live in a vacuum we um, are a product of our families we're a product of our biology we're a product of um what i eat for lunch i mean I don't function independently from the universe. Right. And that, um, and to say that, and to take credit for my success is, it, to think about it, might not make any sense whatsoever because um, it'd be like, I can't take any more credit for my success than I can for your success. Here's what I can take credit for. And it's something that, interestingly, my job has a lot to do with this. I'm a gifted education specialist. And for those listening who don't know what that is, is I serve middle school students who are designated as gifted, meaning they work beyond capacity, beyond grade level. But I will tell you that giftedness, to a large degree, is luck. It's the luck of what you had access to, mm -hmm. to learn. It's the luck of being born to parents who read to you. It was the luck of being born in some countries a boy instead of a girl. It was the luck of there was someone around when you choked on that grape and they gave you the Heimlich and you lived through it. Mm -hmm. I look at my own life and I learned the hard way, this belief, and that's why I hold it so strongly. My life is a long, long list of achievements that I'm kind of proud of, I guess. I used to be a lot more proud of them. But as I've gotten older, I realize the incredible luck that I had of having, and I keep going back to the public library, of having access to a public library so that I could become smarter than maybe luck would have had it. But I was still lucky to have that library. It's interesting, you raise a good question that I don't know I've really thought about. Um, can we be proud of anything we do? Say again? Can we really be proud of anything we do? Because well, if we're not the beholder of the action, and it's just a series of actions that led up to our action, right. what are we, what are we really never... proud of? I would never take someone else's pride about something away from No, no, I, 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 yeah. I, I, I'll take it that. A bit like, is that an emotion that really represents something that reflects something true in the world? Yeah. Well, when I look at the medical <laughs> luck and hard work that I've done to make it here, I have lived through two really, really serious diagnoses. Some of that was luck because I was treated by outstanding yeah. medical personnel. Some of it was my own fight. Well, 
I'm a little confused. Mm -hmm. Are you responsible for, do you take ownership and responsible for the hard work you do? What Did I you have a choice in that? Yes, and I'll give you an example. When I was diagnosed with a heart condition that took me three years to get diagnosed, I kept getting misdiagnosed for three years. I was misdiagnosed with anxiety. I was misdiagnosed with you name it. And a lot of that was because I was a woman. And a lot of these, unfortunately, male doctors defaulted to they couldn't see it. And so they said, well, it must be this. And they were typically very uh, women-based diagnoses. So here's what I take credit for. A lot of people would have given up and they would have said, well, I guess I have X, Y, Z. But what I did was I demanded, finally, a female cardiologist who found what was wrong with me. Yeah, and I'm not taking anything away from you that there's something intrinsic that sure. that did that. But I think where I'm confused is, is that you're telling me that there are some things that we shouldn't take credit for because we have no ownership it's just if there's just a, a chain of cause and effects and cause and effects what are we taking we can't take credit for previous causes I'm just I'm the result of what I am and there are those things that we can't take credit for but there are other things that we do take credit for there's something within me that's separate from the world it's internal to me that mm -hmm. I can manipulate and decide and that doesn't you know and I have a choice in the matter right how do we know which is which as I've gotten older that's what I spend more time with I think as I've gotten older and hopefully wiser I spend more time with that question and I'm not very quick to take credit for things anymore when I was younger I used to take credit for X achievement or X win. What if someone said, how does this resonate with you? Someone said, I believe what you believe, but I take that one step further. Mm -hmm. That I don't think we, not only do I think we take credit for things that we shouldn't take credit for, that we really, what we're taking credit for, mm -hmm. that we can take credit for nothing. There's nothing we can take credit for. How's that, how does that, how does that, I think I would ask the person if they believed in predestination or fate. And I think where mine is different from that is that I don't believe necessarily in fate. And I certainly don't believe in predestination. Like my life was mapped out and I fell into it. But what I do believe is that I've become more considerate of the fact but sometimes, a lot of times, luck has had at least a part to play, bad and good, by the way, in the events of my life. And what that has brought me, I hope, is greater humility mm -hmm. and greater empathy for people who don't have good luck or people who are in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, and what you say resonates, and I think... I'm just wondering how far we should take it, if we could even take it further. And, and, and am, I, am I taking it too far by saying, well, what if we just say that there's really no self? There's no me. There's no you. There's like, you know, we're all interconnected. That intrinsically, that much, where to say that one person can internally make a decision Free from other, free from inputs from other places is 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 ludicrous to say that. How does that sound to you? If I said that, I think that that's one of the best challenges we could give ourselves as Americans, because Americans are all about that. Aren't we? we're all about the self, and we're all about exceptionalism. And I would say, more so in recent years, yeah, to some degree, and. If Tanya's sitting next to you and Tanya says, mm -hmm. I believe the opposite of you, basically. Okay. I've done everything for myself. I pulled myself up by my bootstraps. Mm -hmm. I was given a bad, some bad cards in my deck and I 
and no one did anything for me and I did it all myself and I take credit, what do we say to Tanya? I wouldn't say anything directive to them. I would ask questions. I would ask them questions like, have you ever just been missed by a car? Have you ever what? Have you ever just been missed by a car? Have you ever choked on something and someone was there to slap your back or give you the Heimlich so you could be sitting here today? Have you ever... And what if she gave you a supernatural explanation? Just curious what you'd say to that. That is a realm that I don't argue with people. I'll discuss it and I'll listen. No, no, I just yeah. I really want to know what, what your response to her would be. I don't believe that there's a God accounting for my life or for my actions. And what I would say, I would question the person again respectfully. And I, was, I would ask them if they can contextualize it for me in a way that I can see through, say, science or realism. Can you please contextualize this higher power to me so that I can understand it in the world that I live in? And by questioning that person, hopefully I'm being respectful of that belief. And I would admit to them that I am not, a, at least in the context of where we are right now, I, I don't believe in God. Or, I'm just not religious. I used to be. I grew up with religious people, and I have a parent who is AWOL for religion now. Yeah. And AWOL for a lot of things that he used to not be. I don't know him anymore. This is what I'm doing. This is called street epistemology. You would be good at it. Thank you. You should learn to do this. This is what it's street epistemology is learn is having these conversations and really trying to understand how people know what they know. And I really want you to check it out. I think you'd be really, uh, really good at it. Um, well, I would. I'd like to learn, and I'll tell you why. I think I probably do some version of this with my students and have been for over yeah, 20 years. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Because the way, well, one of the ways, it's not the only way. One of the ways to get on with teenagers is to be respectful of them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I hope that I have done that my whole life. And I think that what you're talking about, which I would love to learn more about, because if I can stoke that in my students, yeah. And I can help them think about the I call it metacognition. This is what that is. Yeah. This is metacognition. Yeah. This, I have them think about their thinking. He's teaching metacognition with something aligned to the Socratic method. Yeah, and I do a lot of Socratic seminars. Yeah. Which some students find tedious and exhausting and frustrating. And so I approach them with compassion. Yeah. Because again, that's all part of it. You'd you be such be... a natural at this, I'm telling you. Oh, thanks. So go, if you could go to my YouTube channel being it's called being reasonable. I saw your sign. I'm gonna look it up. Look it up and just randomly, just you can see the kind of conversations I have. Okay. And I'm just trying to get more people to have conversations in this way, this Socratic method, teaching. You know, not you know, it's it's when we're like debating beliefs, like nothing gets done. But when you teach somebody how to think, right? How to Form beliefs and how to root out bad ones when they have bad ones. I think and that's not, not the, to take it personally. What, in dealing with teenagers, you learn very quickly. Don't ever take it personally, and that's yeah. why I approach a lot of things with questions instead yeah, of right. with just imposing what I think because I'm wrong a lot. Yeah, I have a lot to learn. My kids can still teach me things, and so they yeah. know that it's I'm just a, super it's open. epistemic humility that yeah. that you, that's what I try to do when I have these conversations that. When someone sits down in a chair, I say, this person might might have it, might have this, <laughs> some alignment with the objective truth, and if they do, I'd like to learn it, and I'm not going to learn it by them just telling me they have it. I'm going to have, yeah. the only way I'm going to learn it is to, is to me to figure out how they went about learning. Yeah. This is a cool project. Thanks for including yeah. me. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm just trying to, uh, there's a movement of us doing this, and we're trying to get more people to learn it, and I really think you'd be good at it. Well, I appreciate and that. So, yeah.